All right, everybody, welcome back into another Auburn Live football show. Appreciate everybody for joining us with me again for the second time this season. Mr. Ben Lear. Ben, what's up, man? Man, I'm good. I'm just uh, wishing that we were going to talk about something under different circumstances rather than rather than yesterday's ball game. Ugh. Yeah, we can talk hoops. Um, hey, that, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, I think they're going to be another fun team. Um, all right, we'll get into all that real quick before we do. Shout out to our main sponsor of the show, Session Cocktail in downtown Auburn. If you haven't been, go check them out. Really good people there. Um, Joe and uh, and Hunter and Avery and all the all the people that kind of run that place. Um, awesome happy hour, four to six. And some great drinks, great, great environment, great ambiance to go go have some drinks on a weekday or a weeknight or after dinner, or before dinner, all that good stuff. Um, I'm sure they're going to be slamming this weekend probably wednesday thursday friday saturday they'll be uh they'll be cooking with the iron bowl going on here in auburn so go check them out right there on magnolia next to taco mama um, appreciate them they make awesome drinks so go support them tell them you heard about uh, them through auburn live um and they'll treat you well all right ben um i think last time we talked was i think it was after mississippi stakes so we were kind of positive a little, little uptick upbeat um Auburn went on to win two more in a row, three straight. You're, everybody's assuming it's going to be four straight going into the Iron Bowl. You roll in 25 and a half point favorites over New Mexico State, who's not a bad team, eight and three coming in. And, um, you know, Saturday is hard to explain. It's really hard to explain. I was, I was talking to, uh, to my dad actually. Um, who, uh, you know, my parents are scholarship donors for people who don't know. So they, 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 they live and breathe it. And it was like, it was hard to, for him, it was hard to even talk about the game because it was different than losing to Georgia by a touchdown. It was just different. It's like that. I mean, it was just when you walk away and you're 25 point favorites over New Mexico State, you lose by three touchdowns. You're dominated in every facet of the game. I mean, literally, it's, it's in the discussion of one of the worst losses in the, in, Certainly oh, yeah. in decades and, and, you know, I think I think 45 years is the last time. I mean, it's been 45 years since Auburn was that kind of favorite and lost. Um, what's your reaction? I mean, what's, what was your immediate reaction a day later? What's your reaction to what we to what we saw, man? I, you know, Hoke, it's – and I – look, let's just go ahead and, and preface this. We're not going to make any comment or we're not going to say anything – about the outcome and the performance or lack thereof that the players and the coaches didn't already feel and or haven't already discussed. So, you know, we're not, we're not, you know, this isn't some groundbreaking speculation or, or prognostication or whatnot, but from the jump, from the first offensive possession of the ball game for New Mexico State there was there was zero life there was zero urgency there looked to be zero preparedness there looked to be zero reaction it just they it just didn't look as if they got off the bus and and that's and that's top to bottom that's that's players and coaches alike and you, you can't say that you can't say that they did not prepare for the game because they obviously practiced, but I do think that they caught, they got caught with their pants down and granted New Mexico state, they played a hell of a ball game, but there's no excuse to have lost that game. None whatsoever. And you, you watch that game. Auburn defensively had zero answers for anything that New Mexico State was doing. I, I don't remember statistically what it is, but I would be willing to bet they had a very high percentage of third down uh, third down turnovers or third down to first conversions. Yeah, that's 50%. Uh, Auburn, on the other hand, could not find any rhythm offensively. They, they unfortunately were not able to run the ball as effectively as, as they had in the prior three weeks. And 
we all know that they struggle immensely through the air uh, just because of the lack of emergence of a, of a, of a go-to or a number of go-to receivers. And New Mexico State defensively just, I mean, they, they just put a hat on a hat, man. I mean, they, they did the things that, and, and found success in areas that Auburn just couldn't do. And then, and they did, you know, and, and go back and look, prime example is that fourth and two fake punt mm. that pretty much sealed the game. New Mexico State knew that they were going to have to swing for the fences, right? They did things the right way. They converted third downs. And then they knew they were going to have to take a gamble or two. That was a prime example of a, of a gamble to seal the game. Because at that point, it was still there was still a possibility mm-hmm. of, of coming back and, and making it something that would come down to the last drive. But it was, man, just being disappointed, just disappointed in the outcome and disappointed in, you know, just overall just losing to a New Mexico State or losing to someone that or a team that's 0-25 against the SEC, you're a 26-point favorite at home, should not, we should not be having this discussion. And granted, look, I, when I was playing, we lost some games. We lost a lot of games. 2012, they lost a lot of ball games. This is I, I, I walked away from this New Mexico State game last night or yesterday really more disappointed than I did a few years back when Auburn lost a 28-point lead to Mississippi State. This Watching this was just – it was very deflating – because it was such a downward trajectory from where they had risen and what they had the opportunity to do in front of them. When this ball game, it sets up to be one of the most electrifying iron bowls that I'd, I'd be willing to bet that you and I have ever seen ourselves with a true chance to win the game. Now I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really struggling to find the opportunity to be positive about this upcoming Iron Bowl. You're not alone. You, you're not going to be alone in that. Yeah, it, it's um that that loss is. I mean, it's so hard to put into words because there, there's. I mean, there's everything. There's not one thing to point to as a positive. I mean, I was writing. I was writing after the game, and I'm looking, and I'm. I'm. I am combing for a positive. Yeah. I'm like, here's a positive. Well, and two, it was hard pressed to come up with. In, the only thing I came up with was, well, Alex McPherson's still perfect, and uh, and Rivaldo Fairweather continues his nice season, and that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's well, right there. and and two, it's it's very it's it's extreme. It's even more difficult to look at it and find one or two reasons why they lost. They just, they just got dominated. I mean, and, and like you said in the opener, every facet of the game, New Mexico State dominated that football game. Yep. Special teams, offensively, defensively. So just like you said, it's very difficult to look back and find a positive. It's extremely difficult to go back and look and, and, look and, and find a reason why. You know, a mm-hmm. turnover. A, a uh, you know, a, a personal foul call that that extended a drive for New Mexico State in a, in a pivotal moment. That didn't happen. They just lined up and and kicked their ass. And and that that's it. I mean, they they brought it. And man, I mean, you got to tip your hat to them. They're a well coached football team. They're, they're super tough. They're very, very good against the run. I mean, they just they came in with a chip on their shoulder. And I think they called Auburn asleep at the wheel at, at on the sidelines and between the lines. It, it just it was a it was a recipe for disaster, and they took advantage of it. Yeah, shocking. I think it feels like when you have a game like that, where 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 like what you're saying, where it's hard to find the one thing, it points to that it was literally everything. It, it was it was. I mean, you look across the board. They won the trenches. They didn't turn it over. They won time of possession. They converted more third downs. They just they just did every critical play went their way. Um, 
even when Auburn looked like they might force a fumble, it was blown dead. I mean, every single thing that needed to happen went their way. Every play that needed to be made, they made. Every one that Auburn needed to make, they didn't. Um, even even here's a crazy thing. I told somebody like New Mexico State committed 12 penalties in that game. New Mexico State was a 25 point underdog, went on the road to Auburn, committed 12 penalties for over 100 yards, and still won that game by 21. Like Auburn was really bad penalty wise. They were twice as bad as they normally were. They normally commit about five a game, they committed 10. New Mexico State committed 12 penalties and overcame that. Yeah. And still did what they did. It makes it that much more shocking. Um, you, you, I would say you were there. You had the App State close call in 99. You had, you had, uh, UCF, was that 98 close call? Were you that? Yeah. The, but you won. It was Culpepper, right? Yep. Um, but you won. There's a, there'd been a bunch of those. Jack State in 2015 was a close call. Georgia State in, in 2021 was a close call. Um, so there have been a bunch of close calls, but they've always been, They've always been wins. You have to go back to, I think, 91 when Auburn lost to Southern Miss, but you had Brett Favre on the, side, on the other side. Um, losing losing in this fashion is just um, – it, it, it's just – I mean, even like, you know, 98, Auburn wasn't was – three. I think it was 3-8, and eight, 99 with a 5-6 and six team. The 15 team was 500. Um, but they still found ways to win those games. Yeah, and well, and, and the, you know, this – the close call games, you're disappointed. You, you hate to say it like this, but you're disappointed that you didn't cover, right? You you still won. You still mm-hmm. you still walked away with the W in the column. This one, this one's a this one's a kick in the gut, man. I mean, it's we're we as fans, we're going to see what type of resiliency the kids on this roster have. We're going to see the type of resiliency that this coaching staff has. Because there are so many things about this loss that are potentially catastrophically derailing, just like crushing recruiting momentum. You run the risk of you run the risk, very high risk of just getting flat out embarrassed by Alabama in the Iron Bowl at home. Uh And and that's. If if the same if if the same performance repeats itself in the Iron Bowl that was there yesterday, it's it's not it's not going to be good. It's not going to be there's not there's not going to be anything positive that comes out of it, and it's going to be even more catastrophic, you know, for for a number of years to come if that if that perpetuates itself. Look, I I gave I gave. This team way too much credit last week. Uh, went on our modcast and I said, you know what? I said I think this team. They lost four straight SEC games. They bounced back. They won three in a row. I was like, but I think this team. Now that they have a little success and they're winning, they won some games. I think they're going to continue to be hungry because they have nothing to hang their hat on. They're still three and four in the SEC and they're they haven't done anything except beat three bottom dwellers. But they tasted a little bit of um, success and fun. And I'm like, I think they're going to hold on to that. I think they're going to be excited to go play. Why in the world would this team think that they could go out and and just kind of roll their helmets out? Like everybody was talking about it being a trap game. And I'm like, well, surely this team doesn't think this is going to be a trap game. I mean, they 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 just went through a, a stretch of five weeks without losing a game. They have no reason to right. be overconfident or cocky or or think. And, sh- and sure enough, that's exactly what they did. They beat Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, and Arkansas. And 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 on top of what looked like lack of preparation and, and, and bad game planning, um, you had comments after the game of players th- saying, I think we, we thought we could just kind of go out there and take care of business. And that was just – that was surprising to me. Um, I, I wonder if the coaching staff since that, Hugh Freeze said afterwards, we had an okay practice on Tuesday. We didn't practice well Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, I talked to somebody that said that they 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 were trying to hammer to these guys last week. Don't take this lightly. They even made, from what I understand, a video like you know and showed them like of, of New Mexico State's for real. Like don't you know they kind of put together a clip of some people in the media and stuff that were saying so. So they tried to hammer it to the guys. This is a good team. 
and don't overlook them. Um, but I, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Effort and energy weren't there, but the game planning wasn't there either. No. You know, Hugh Freeze, Hugh Freeze said afterwards, energy and effort weren't there, but that falls on me. Um, but, man, I, I would have loved to heard a little more accountability like we failed as coaches. And I heard it from some. Zach Etheridge, Carl Williams, I heard it from some. But um, it was just shocking. I'm curious to know. I would love to know Hugh Freeze Saturday morning if he was thinking – I don't know. I'm not sure if we're ready for that. Like, I would love to be in his mind Saturday morning, hearing him talk about some bad practices and know Saturday morning, was he going, I didn't like how we did that. I didn't like how we went this week. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned right yeah. now. Or did he roll in Saturday thinking everything was going to be, be good as well? I, I don't know. I just, I don't, I'm not inside those guys head, but from, from literally start to finish, it was, it was domination. Well, and, and you wonder, and and only in all honesty, as as any as any head football coach coach is or has or does, if there was any, I call it pucker factor, on yeah. Saturday morning, based on the on the you know the poor preparation or poor performance of the team in their various practices throughout the week, on Saturday morning when he was kind of when he was thinking about it, was there anxiety? An unusual anxiety, whether you know, from the standpoint of, hey man, we just want to come out alive. We just want to, we just want to get a W. I would be willing to bet that was probably the case, but you know, and I don't know. I I haven't I haven't, you know, obviously he hasn't been in Auburn long enough to kind of pick up on on his reactions to to wins and losses. Is, is he a is he a guy like you said that you know takes it on the nose and takes full responsibility and and whatnot, or is he somebody that you do walk away from a post game presser like you said and be like, man, I wish, I wish that had taken a little bit more, from, you know, on the chin for the coaches and you know so that stuff like that we'll we'll figure that out. You know, guys like Zach, guys like guys like Cadillac, I'm certain guys like Kendall Simmons. You know, all the all those dudes are like, man, we we as coaches could have, should have done a better job drilling at home to these kids, even in preparation or in the moment. You know, hey, it's a four quarter game. You you've you get you've been you've been toting a whooping here the first two quarters. There's there's still you can still ratchet it down. Let's let's write the ship. Let's figure it out. That never happened. Hoke it I never Ever throughout the entire game, even when it was seven to seven, you still felt, man, there something's just not there. It's just not clicking. On on on, on at any point, did I feel positive throughout the four quarters of that ball game? Yeah, it was dead. You thought there was that little scuffle early, um, where the teams kind of got together after the late hit on Nehemiah Pritchett, and you thought, okay, this, this is going that 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 probably woke him up. Yeah. Um, and it and it didn't. But look, I even the crowd, I mean, I, you know, even the crowd was was dead. You know, I don't blame the students. It's fall break. Um, some of them went for home for Thanksgiving. But like there was a lot of empty seats in the student section already. Like I'm thinking, can't you hang around another day and go to the game? Um, a lot of empty seats up there, you know, some empty seats in the corners and just kind of a dead crowd. I mean, the whole vibe and energy from the stadium to the players to everything was off from the get-go. And then on top of that, it couldn't have started any worse. It could be a dead atmosphere. And then let's say Auburn, Auburn could get away with it if, let's say it's zero to zero for a little bit in the first quarter, and you're like, okay, guys, wake up. But yeah. the dead atmosphere in New Mexico State, first drive, touchdown, Auburn three and out. It couldn't have started worse on top of just sort of the energy not being there to immediately – give New Mexico State all kinds of life and confidence, even more than they had coming in when in six straight. And it just um, it just kind of steamrolled from, from there where Auburn could not get out in front in that in that football game. Um, like, I don't know where you go uh, from this. Somebody asked Hugh Freeze in the post game, like, how do you make sure you have good practices this week? And he's like, well, I got to go home and think about that. I got to figure that out. The Iron Bowl, yes, stirs up, you know, some natural emotion. It, it, it better. It this better. This is a hangover. Like, I don't 
I don't you you played. I don't know how you go through that in a race that in a day. How, how is that not lingering still on Tuesday or Wednesday? Going, what the heck happened? It is. It's it. There. If they tell you otherwise, they're lying. That they, they anybody that says that, and a coach is going to say that. A coach is going to say, "Hey, it's water under the bridge. It's tough. You know, we we we've, we've had to move on. We've got Alabama coming up. That's I, I get that, but that's coach speak. That's 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 not accurate. You don't put you don't put a loss like this behind you within forty eight to seventy two hours. It still stings. It still stings. The problem is. Even as good as Alabama is, and as and as well as they are playing right now, and I I would go so far as to say that besides Georgia, which is who is rolling right now, Alabama's playing the second best ball in the country, and you not only are you going up against that, but you're you stand the likelihood of allowing New Mexico State to beat you twice, because you're not able to focus and get prepared and be mentally sharp for what Alabama is going to put at you. And it's, it is a, it is a difficult hill to climb for Auburn to beat Alabama on a good day. Besides being, you know, the likelihood or the hope of having been seven and four and coming in on a, on a multi-game win streak and all that kind of stuff. But that, that's, that's all shot. You know, now it's, it's, you know, it's David and Goliath. A hundred percent, and you 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 got to you got to you know you got to tighten them up, buckle the chin strap, and see what happens. And yesterday's outcome does not make you feel too positive. No, it's crazy um, how that switched just with that performance. Um, I think Auburn fans. I think Al- listen, I got Alabama fans friends that have been texting. They've been telling me for weeks that they're terrified of that game. Terrified, oh, yeah. and and overnight it, it stopped. You're like, oh, I mean, it, it overnight both sides completely flip with because of of what you saw on the field, and then of course what you're talking about, what could then linger too of a hangover from that. Well, I had man, I have told over the last couple of weeks, and it, it almost makes me seem somewhat prophetic, which is okay. sad to say, but I've told several folks, I'm like, hey, man, they're gonna. You know, the one game of this stretch, besides the Iron Bowl, that really worried me was Arkansas. Yeah. I, I had no I had no doubts about Mississippi State, no doubts about Vandy. I honestly had no doubt about New Mexico State. Our, going to Fayetteville was the game that, that worried me. Well, they go find lightning in a bottle, and win that game 48-10, to have won three in a row, I had told multiple players, like, guys, I know you guys, while you were getting recruited, saw some good Iron Bowls, but you guys find a way to come into this Iron Bowl 7-4, and four, host in Alabama, in Jordan Hare. It will be the most electric environment that you have ever experienced. And and there is a – because it's in Jordan Hare and the momentum that you'll be having at the time – there is a there is a high possibility that you can win that game, and I I hate to say it, but man, that that level of positivity is it is if not erased, it's diminished. Yeah. What sh- what shocked you the most from from that loss in New Mexico State was it a a, a seemingly a a lack of motivation, or was it the fact that it looked like Jerry Kill in New Mexico State completely out schemed Auburn on both sides of the ball for the second time. I mean, what is it like? What what is a more shocking thing to you? The effort from the players or the, it, the fact that you're going, I think if they played that 10 times, it'd be like six and four. Yeah, Maybe. I think it, it I will, you know, I, I have a hard time as a as a former player. I have a really hard time questioning effort. I really do, you know, because, you know, it's it's saying that saying that someone's not giving full effort or really not trying. That's really that's really a, a that's a very subjective speculation. And so, I I don't feel as if it's fair for anyone to say that the effort just wasn't there. You know, granted, they didn't seem to have a spark. 
they didn't seem to be, you know, have the excitement that they'd had the last couple of weeks, but it still doesn't mean they're going a hundred percent where, where I was most disappointed is that it just did not look to be schematically that Auburn had an answer for anything that New Mexico yeah. did, especially Auburn defensively. I mean, it just, they absolutely were picking the defense apart, running the ball, throwing the ball. When they were, you know, when they were jockeying in the the other athletic quarterback doing some different things, <laughs> I, they just, it was just a monotonous 10, 11 play drives. You know, you get to third and five, uh, they break a seven yard run or complete a, a six yard dig, you know, stuff like that, that, you know, on a, on a normal day, when, when you feel like you've got your play call and dialed in, those are, those are third and eternities, though, especially, especially when you're at home. And it just did not seem as if Auburn had an answer for anything. Look, Coach Keel and his staff did a well of a job, you know, with not only with preparation, but in game. They did some things in the game to make adjustments and and find success that it just it it absolutely compounded itself throughout the four quarters. Yeah, there's a lot of good points. Um, all right, real quick, let's give another shout out to another sponsor of ours, Game Time, Game Time about CO. Um, ben, I'm sure you get hit up for tickets all the time. Um, people trying to get you to hook up. GameTime.co is a, a really good way to do that. Uh, you can download the app or go to GameTime.co and get last minute tickets to sporting events, comedy shows, concerts, whatever you got. Um, they do a really good job. Um, and then, of course, if you find tickets at another place later on, um, they'll give you a, a they'll like refund the gap, the differential plus some a little bit. So they kind of a guarantee there. Go use the promo code War Eagle, get 20% off. War Eagle, 20% off. GameTime.co, sponsor of On3 and Auburn Live. Um, all right, Ben. I don't know where you where, where do you go from here. Well, I, 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 let me ask you this: Is that loss? I don't think that loss is going to impact recruiting. I just having covered recruiting for a long time, I've seen some bad losses, um, and you can always spend that stuff. You can, yeah. I mean, if anything, you can walk into somebody like Cam Coleman's living room and go, "Hello, do you, you see how bad we need you?" You know, you come be a part. We're gonna build this thing. We're gonna need. We're gonna get the talent. But you see, you know why we need you so bad. Like, there's ways to spend that in this day and age. It's nil money. It's get me to the NFL. It's relationships. It's I rarely have talked to a kid that goes, yeah, I don't know. I really like them, but geez, that loss sucked. It just doesn't happen. They're yeah. not fans are in the now. Recruits are in the later. Um, one loss doesn't do it. Multiple losses or a losing season or. Something like that can lose you momentum, but that one loss isn't really going to impact things. Um, but is that loss, does that worry you at all down the road? And I say that because, you know, the reality now is <clears throat> this is three straight seasons that Hugh Freeze has done something like this. He did it in 21. He was a 30-point favorite against La Monroe at Liberty. They lost. In 22, they were big favorites over New Mexico State at Liberty. They got crushed. And then this year, 20 to 25 and a half point favorites, they lose three years in a row. He has been a 20 plus point favorite and uh, and lost the football game. Consecutive, three consecutive seasons has happened. Um, you know, is just is there anything long term that worries you about that loss, or do you think it's isolated to a team not having talent? They kind of got on a little winning streak. They got in. They got out over their skis. Maybe the staff was looking ahead to Bama, and it just sort of culminated in a bad one bad day. I think it was the. I think it's just what you just said. I think it was kind of that new money mentality, right? You know, we got a couple wins under our belt. We're feeling ourselves a little bit. We're peacocking some. You know, doing our thing. I, I think that was it, and not. And I, and I don't want to sound disrespectful to the kids on the roster, but from a talent perspective, they do not have the depth, right? They do not have the, the talent that a Georgia, that an Alabama, that a Tennessee, that an LSU has, a Florida State, that on a bad coaching day, the talent 
bridges that gap on a on a day that on a day that you may not have the best plays dialed in or you may not have the best game plan or you could have missed the mark preparation wise as a staff your sta- your talent still gets it done and i think that's where that's where obviously nick saban has been for years i think that's where kirby is i think that's where brian kelly is i think honestly that's close to where lane is in oxford um but right now for auburn to win games any game they've got to be dialed in you're you're they just don't have they just don't have the roster depth to overcome lackluster performances or lackluster preparedness by the coaching staff i don't think it has an overwhelming hangover effect with regards to hugh freeze and his um inability to win every game i I just don't i don't think i don't think that's something that's gonna rear itself and him lay an egg once a year um i do think like you had said just a second ago talking about recruiting if they build the roster that he is capable of building and that he has shown the ability to build with regards to the kids that he's getting committed to play at auburn and those that he has hopefully really really close to making the commitment that's the talent and that's the depth across the board or across the roster that that you honestly should be able to roll your helmet out there against the New Mexico State and win that game. May not cover, but you're not going to get beat by 21. That's for dang sure. Well, um, you know, you got to turn the page quickly. It's Alabama. How, how do you do it? If you were a player – and you're sitting there and, and, and you're the quarterback and this happens to you, what is the best way you think they can turn the page? What would you want to hear from your coaching staff? Is there even anything they could say? Is this is this something that's up to the players to 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 turn this page and to get themselves, you know, ready for Alabama? What needs to happen Sunday, Monday, Tuesday for I think it's a, I think it's a culmination of two things. One there needs to be some leadership. There needs to be somebody on the roster, a couple of players or two, whoever it is, Eugene Asante, whoever, I, I, I don't care. Somebody needs to come in and say, guys, to be honest with you, we, we lost that game. We got our tails kicked, but we all need to understand that that's not acceptable regardless. However, doomsday, everyone thinks we are as a roster or whatever the scenario is, it's not acceptable. So we got to turn the page, we got to prepare, and we got to shock the world. We're going to shock the world. It's us against the world. It's it's a, it's nothing to lose mentality. That's how they've got to as a as a locker room attack the week and attack Saturday. As a coaching staff, you have to put forth a game plan that capitalizes that that punctuates that that punctuates the fact that you have nothing to lose you need to have onside kicks fake punts reverses reverse passes flea flickers go back and look at you know you you go back and think of the i guess it would be the 2009 iron ball right auburn shouldn't even been close to that game and and Alabama had to had to put forth a, a ninety some odd yard game winning drive and win it the last minute or two, you know. But they did things that were very unorthodox that they had not done throughout the season. It was an electric environment. Um, so the the coaches are gonna have to find a way to dial in these kids and buy into the fact that you do have a fighting chance. Yes, things have to go right, but you do have an opportunity to win. And this is how we're going to put you in a position to do so. And this is, this is what's going to happen. I'll never forget. And there's, it's nowhere near the, the type of monumental moment. It wasn't an iron bowl scenario, but I remember Tubbs used to tell us in, in 1999, when he first got to Auburn, he said, guys, of the week, the week of the game, 
before we played, let's say, for example, before we played LSU, the week of that game, he said, guys, we're going to onside kick and we're going to fake a, we're going to, uh, we're going to fake a field goal, whichever one we decide, but just be ready. Cause it's happening. And obviously we did. Right. And it was successful in 2000 for his first trip back to Oxford. They had a star studded team, but Romero yeah. Mills, Deuce McAllister, and they were freaking loaded. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were, we were kind of, we were on the cusp of, of really, of really breaking through. And he said, during the week, first time we're going to, we're going we're gonna to win the toss. We're going to, we're going to defer. So we're going to get the ball to start the second half. We're going to do that. We're going to stop them on their first possession. Then we're going to get the ball. Ben, you're going to drive down. We're going to score. And then our first kick in the first half, we're onside kicking it. Just, just be ready. I'll never forget. We drive down. I throw a ball to Rudy. We score. He grabs me as I'm coming off the field. He says, don't go far. We're getting the ball back. I had totally forgotten. Totally forgotten. But him grabbing me and looking me in the face and, hey, I don't know where you think you're going. We're about to get it back. And sure enough, we did. So that's that's the mentality. That's the that's the attitude that this staff has to have every day this week. And 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 that's going to breathe that's going to breathe life into these kids and breathe some positivity that has them feeling as if they are bigger than they are. And and that's what they've got to do. They to have a to have a chance. They've they've got to be firing on all cylinders and they've got to have a lot of things go their way that just that just come off an effort off of effort, excitement and rolling the dice a little bit. That's a great story. Um, yeah, you almost you almost want Hugh Freeze to walk in there and, you know, Monday morning and go, you know, listen, I've beaten this team. I've beaten this program. I know how to do it. If you don't think we're going to do it, there's the door. Yeah. I don't care well, what just happened Monday morning. If you don't think we're going to win, there's the door. If you do, then 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 get your mind right from here on out this week. And there's going to be a, a switch flipped in how he sort of motivates the Thing. There's a there's a pregame speech that he gave at Ole Miss before one of the before one of the Alabama games, and I, I verbatim I can't remember it, but you can you can look it up. It's he, he says, "Hey, nobody thinks we're supposed to be in this game. They've got the best roster in college football. They're loaded. You know, we're we've just we just got a bunch of guys, a bunch of dudes." He said, "But we're ready for a fight." You know, we're 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 good for a fight. He said, So we're gonna run out of this locker room. He said, Let's just hey, let's just lock the gate behind us and go looking for a fight. Yeah. Let's let's go. I mean, that's 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 gonna be it's gonna be that pit bull mentality, right? It's gonna be, hey, do do not do not allow anyone to push you around in your house. And that might be that might be what they're looking for, and I agree with you. I think he's going to have to set the tone. He's got to set it either he set it today, or he sets it tomorrow. That guys, we can do this, and this is how we're going to get it done. We're going to have a street fighter mentality, and we're going to shock everybody. Yeah, that's what it's going to take because they got punked on Saturday, I and mean, they just got they got punked. And Mexico State came in there and. And punked him. I even put up a video before the game, dude, I'm talking trash to, to Auburn players as they're going into the locker room after Tiger Walk. And uh, it was one of their cornerbacks. He ended up finding the video and retweeting it. I saw it today. Um, but I mean, from the jump, they're, they're, they're talking. I remember watching, they're talking junk. And you're like, what's going on, man? These guys are three touchdown underdogs. This guy's running his mouth. And uh, they backed every bit of it up. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Zach, Zach, Zach mentioned um, them throwing, uh, slamming Peyton Thorn down, and and the team having no reaction. Yeah, it was just a weird. It was a weird. It was a weird game, man. That they, they just they didn't have, they didn't have the juice, and it was unacceptable from from top to bottom. Yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. They're they're sound underdogs to to Alabama. Um, wouldn't shock me at all if if they play Alabama sort of like they play Georgia. It wouldn't shock me at all if they've been watching Alabama film during New Mexico State week, and that's part of that was part of the problem. Wouldn't shock me at all if they tried to peek ahead and it and it caught them. 
Um, but maybe, you know, there's something positive out of that and they're ready to go. We'll, we'll see. I think the, the issue is going to be how do you get the players back? I think the coaches can flip a switch a little bit. How do you get these players last regular season game? Um, how do you get them um, up for – for this game after what they just did uh, against New Mexico State. Massive, massive challenge for Hugh Freeze and company as they try to get some momentum. As I said, if they lose the Iron Bowl, they will go to a bowl game. That bowl game will be to avoid three straight losing seasons. Um, the last time they did that was 75, 76, and 77, where they had three straight losing records. Now, granted, now you play, they, you can go to two of those would be bowl games where you lose the bowl game. and um, but a losing record's a losing record. So yeah. it hasn't happened since 75 through 77. If they don't win the Iron Bowl, that's what's on the table. So just a little history there. But, look, it's still the Iron Bowl. It'll be fun. I think they need to come out. They need to have a great first quarter. Or first first six, seven minutes for sure. They have got to show that they're ready to play. they got to come out, get a stop, maybe go get a field goal. Something's got to happen really quick, really immediate to get the momentum back on their side. If they go out and give up a touchdown and go three and out right off the bat, they're in a world they're in a world of trouble. They have they have to come out and do something positive almost immediately to get the bad taste out of their mouth, to get the fans riled up and ready to go like, okay, all right, this is the team we wanted to see. Let's go. It's yeah. got to happen quick. It'll be interesting, to say the least. We'll be there. You know, I, I don't doubt I don't doubt that the stadium would be full, but it's how much uh, how ruckus the crowd will be is yeah. is is a is a big variable at this point. And they because because the game is in Jordan Hare, that always gives Auburn a fighting chance. Always. No doubt. No doubt. We'll be there. You'll be there. Um, hopefully Auburn fans will go. Don't sell your tickets. If you do, sell them to another Auburn fan. I've seen this scenario before where you lose a little momentum and you sell tickets to whoever. And, and of course, the program, you know, Alabama, they're going to they're gonna leak in there anyway. So um, it'll it'll be fun. It's an Iron Bowl. Um, hopefully it'll be a really good game. Look, tw- 2021, there's no – there's nobody thought that game was going to go that way. Backup quarterback, um, that team, you know, takes Alabama to four overtime, should have won the game. Nobody saw that coming. So it's it's certainly not out of the realm of possibility that Auburn comes out there and plays well. And, and in the fourth quarter, we're sitting here going, who's going to make the play to win the game? So we'll see how it goes. Um, appreciate everybody joining us. Go to AuburnLive.com. Uh, subscribe. One dollar, one month. We're actually running a special this week. It's 50% off an annual subscription. So for this week, uh, big game special, go to AuburnLive.com. You get half off an annual sub. Go take advantage of that. Subscribe to YouTube. Turn on notifications, all that good stuff. Ben, we'll see you Saturday, man. Appreciate uh, you joining us. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Have a good Thanksgiving. We'll see everybody in Auburn on Saturday.